Ariel Hawane, for lack of a better term, was a pathetic worm in his interview with Jamal Hill that they had, talking about his fight at UFC 283. Now, I knew this was going to be a bit of a confrontational interview because Ariel Hawani had said some things before, talking about how Yuri Prohaska is still the best light heavyweight in the world, and obviously Jamal Hill's not going to agree with that, and they debated that. I'm not going to talk about that in this video. But he also said some things like, you know, he wasn't really overly praising of Jamal Hill's win. He was more just talking about, you know, who can beat Jamal Hill, who's better than Jamal Hill, and he wasn't very congratulatory, and neither was I at first, but then I sort of checked myself, and really digested the reality of his performance, and just sort of like saw the reality of the situation, and Jamal Hill argues that with Ariel, and I think wins the argument against Ariel in that regard, um, so they disagree on that, it's not really about that, it's about something that happens later on in the interview, where I believe, because Ariel Hawani lost the verbal exchange early on with Jamal Hill. He tried to really, really pathetically, like a worm, make Jamal Hill seem like a bad person by bringing up Jamal Hill talking about Dana White's whole slap situation with his other half. And I think it was a really pathetic thing to bring up because Jamal Hill was winning an argument against him and getting him on something. And I'm going to play this video but I'm going to just say at the start of this, before I even get into it, I think Ariel is in this mindset right now where he's feeling himself too much and he needs an ego check, man. It, he said before his job is to promote the fighter and big up the fighter. That's all he does this for. It's not about making money off the fighters and stuff like that. This was the whole thing he was talking about during the Paddy Pimlet situation. He's here to promote the fighters and give them a platform and help out the fighters. He's the fighters guy. He's all for the fighters. It feels like recently he wants to win verbal battles with the fighters any chance he possibly can get because he wants to be Mr. 10-8 Helwani and have another 10-8 Helwani moment. And I think he lost a verbal exchange early in this one. And that's why he went to pathetic tactics later on in this video. But let's talk about what the interview was about and why they had an initial disagreement. I'm going to sum it up with these few moments here. Jamal Hill says this. Which, it, which that was cool, but it went from that into, oh, I think Pieters like, could even come up and beat him. Nah, I like never that. said that. I never said that. Well, you so he said, I think that, you know, Pereira could even go up and beat him. That's what Jamal Hill insinuated that Ariel Hawani said. And to be fair, it kind of is what Ariel Hawani was suggesting. But Ariel says, I never said that. I never said that. You did that shit, bro. And then Jamal Hill's like, you did say that. Because I know you said that, because I saw a clip of it, and I'm going to play that clip in a second. And then Ariel, like, says what he really said during that moment, which was, according to Ariel Hawane. I said there's people talk. Isn't it crazy that people said this about this guy, and now they're having the discussion. We could even have the discussion because of his size and because of the story of him avenging the loss of him going up. That's all. Not so apparently Ariel actually said, which we'll check in a second, um, about Jamal Hill. The, isn't it crazy that people are saying that we are potentially saying that maybe now because of his size and the storyline that he could uh, potentially go up and, and avenge the loss and, and the storyline and, and all this type of stuff. This is what Ariel Hawani really said. However, the rest of the weight class and maybe even the MMA community don't necessarily think he's the baddest 85 on the planet. They say things like, oh, this is about Pereira, of course being the middleweight champion in relation to Jamal Hill's performance at light heavyweight and becoming the light heavyweight champion. Once Bo Nickel gets him or Hamza could even go up and get, you know what I mean? Like it feels like he's like the least respected of the champions right now in the UFC. Yeah. However, there is a scenario where I feel like he could be a double champ. There is a scenario where I feel like he could be a double champ. So you didn't say, you know, based on the storyline, people were saying, and, you know, maybe we could see the situation because he's big enough that maybe we could see the storyline of him redeeming the loss. Like, no, you said, there's a scenario where I feel like he could be a double champ. And that's what Jamal Hill was calling him out on. But Ariel completely denies this despite saying that, but wording it in a very specific way and then linguistically spinning his way out of it during the interview. But that's not the main part of the interview that I want to get at. But I just wanted to prove that overall, early on, Jamal Hill won the verbal exchange against Eri Hawani, whether it was the argument as to why he's better than Yuri Prohaska, that why he would beat Yuri Prohaska. He had all of the points lined up. And I think Ariel felt that in this interview and he wanted to get Jamal Hill back. So I'm going to skip to another moment here, which is at 16 minutes and 55 seconds. And here's 
We're going to listen to some of this. I believe his team is built with that same grit. Uh, you were very emotional afterwards. Why Why were you so emotional? I mean, obviously, big moment, but it's it's uh, it's it's a crazy... Oh, yeah. It just didn't feel that big to you, huh? Oh, uh, stop. And Jamal Hill kind of goes back on him, and it's funny. Like, Jamal Hill's having fun with it and stuff. This yeah, guy. I ain't no stop. You said <laughs> shit. Look, what I, you, know, you better, hey, you better watch what the hell you say then. Watch if you don't want me to bring it up. No, look, hey. bring it up. But by the way, something that feels big to you might not feel big to me, and something that feels big to me might not feel big to you. Pause. <laughs> Stop. Man. Dude, Jamal Hill's kind of funny, dude. I'm... <laughs> Jamal Hill has some funny moments. Pause. I just say yeah. you were emotional. If I, Maybe yeah. I wasn't emotional. You were emotional. Well, that's, I mean, what, what was what's your biggest accomplishment for what you've done in this? And he goes on to talk about, you know, you're insulting something about me, and that's what he had a problem with. Like, he... Jamal Hill was saying Ariel Hawani is diminishing Jamal Hill's greatest accomplishment in his life. And that's why he was offended by it. And that's why he's being confrontational with Ariel Hawani. In my, in my life, like, I mean, being a parent, or you mean my job? Your job. I mean, you know, just living the dream, you know, doing my thing. I don't know. I've never won any belts. You could do this full time. You don't have to work or do nothing else. You could do what you like to do every all day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But why? You know what I mean, like, like what? Like, like just like when Sean Strickland the other day challenged you, challenged you as a, like a fan of what you meant to the game and shit like that. You know what I mean? You, you you felt some type of way about that because you know the work that you put into this and all this and that and all that. That's the same way it was for me, bro. I've been working this whole time. I've been working for thirteen years. This shit ain't new to me. Just because you can only look back and. And he was talking about how like this is why I feel a certain type of way about this and why I think you were out of line is because you diminished the thing that I've been working for, working towards my entire life, essentially. You know what I mean? And Ariel's trying to play like he didn't do this. Listen, I can I can disrespect a fighter because I will own that I disrespected them for funny moments and banter and emotional reaction. I'm not going to sit there and say like, no, I, be, I, I loved you the whole time. Uh, I really want to... And, and try and sort of pander to them. But this is what Ariel Hawani gets caught in in this interview. And Jamal Hill sort of like talks about that as it goes on. We use the fact that we weren't even in the same ever nothing different thing. Fucking make it fly. I'm laying down a blueprint for the trying to lay one. And by the way, don't get it twisted. Me asking you why you were emotional isn't me questioning why you're emotional. I'm just trying to get no, you. This to verb- was, look, look, I missed it, cause this was me addressing this shit you said. I was <laughs> like I said, I was traveling Monday. I had some things. You got a little, you got a little loose with the lips with a couple of the fellas. You know what I'm saying? It's a moment, but here it gets interesting. Well, you're, 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 okay, so here's the thing. Let's keep it real. Can we keep it real? That's all I know how to do. All right. This is where it gets pathetic from Ariel. Right, so you're you're upset at me. I, I'm, okay, maybe you're not upset. Not- you're just calling me out. You felt some sort of way about me saying this about Yuri and me saying that about Alex, apparently, all that stuff. It's not about Yuri or Alex. It's about how they relate to Jamal Hill. It's about Jamal Hill's situation. Here's the thing. And and that's fine. And that's fair game. I believe it's fair game for me to say that because, hey, look, you know, I'm doing a sports show. I'm talking about MMA. We talk about it a lot. Like, I got to be real with my opinions and feelings, too. And I think maybe somewhere deep down inside, you respect that. Now, here's the thing. Obviously, a big story over the last few weeks has been the Dana White situation. You were probably the most vocal fighter on the roster about that situation. He tweeted about the situation. The most vocal fighter on the roster about the situation. Okay. Right? Um, and a lot of no. people... Well, let me finish. Let me finish. About that. Did you ever hear me say, my opinions on Jamal have changed. Jamal shouldn't have said... Did you ever hear me say your name at all when you were... You know, I saw you going back and forth with a lot of people. And I'll be honest. Didn't agree with a lot of your things that you said. And I could have been like, F that guy, da 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 No, I didn't say anything. Did you... He's trying to make it out like Jamal Hill had a bad take about the Dana White situation. And a lot of people did this. Jamal Hill did not defend the actions of Dana White whatsoever. There's nothing for Ariel to be against. Jamal Hill didn't, though, just condemn Dana White. He made a broad statement on his Twitter saying, no one put your hands on anyone and no one's going to get slapped. He made a he, he went above and beyond to say that 
everyone involved in the situation was bad for doing what they did and no one should be putting their hands on anyone and also mentioned women shouldn't be putting their hands on men either he didn't condone what dana white did so what is there for ariel to disagree with about this situation did you hear me shit on you then? Did you hear me criticize you? Did you hear me disparage you? Did you hear me say anything negative about you? Did you hear me even put your name in that bucket? Did you hear any of that? Because you seem to know a lot about what I'm saying. Did you hear any of that? He's trying to relate this. Like, oh, I didn't say, I didn't call you out about saying that women shouldn't slap men. No one should slap anyone in a relationship. I didn't call you out for tweeting that no one should slap anyone in a relationship. So why should you call me out for diminishing your championship win that you've worked your entire life for? I don't know, Ariel, because the Dana White situation, in all reality, has nothing to do with you when it comes to Jamal Hill commenting on it. And you commenting on Jamal Hill in comparison to Yuri Prohaska and Alex Pereira has everything to do with Jamal Hill. So he has a right to feel a certain way about it towards you. You have no right to feel a certain way about the Dana White situation and Jamal Hill's comments on it towards Jamal Hill in any way the same regard. And it's just, it was annoying to see him switch to this after losing verbal exchanges early on. You, you talking you talking about the whole, the, the, the Twitter exchange and all those things. No, because you weren't supposed to, because I wasn't in that situation. You know what I mean? Like, he's literally just, he's confused at the start. Like, why are you even bringing up the Twitter exchange that I had? I wasn't even, in, I'm not involved in that. That's not about me. You know what I mean? Everybody on the internet tried to drag me. Into well, you that commented situation. on it. I made, a, I made a. Well, you commented on it. Like, you commented on it, Ariel. Everyone's commented on it. Jamal Hill can do so as well. And then Jamal Hill says he made a simple statement. Simple statement. Sure. He made a simple statement. Every, and basically, and I'm, I'm going to put it like this. If everybody keeps their hands to themselves, nobody puts their hands on nobody, nobody gets assaulted. There's no, there, you know what I mean? And that's what it was. He said, if nobody slaps anyone, nobody's going to get slapped. So he didn't just condemn the actions of Dana White slapping his woman. Like, he also went beyond that and said no one should be putting their hands on anyone in any relationship. So he went above and beyond to condemn both parties rather than just focusing and so solely condemning Dana White with his tweet. And that was the backlash for some reason. Everybody, nobody gets hit, period. Everybody keep their hands to themselves. That's what I was saying. That's where I'm leaving that shit. A hundred percent. But I'm, it created a stir. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking. For and Jamal Hill wants to change the subject because why has this even been brought up? Because you're salty that you lost a verbal exchange about how you diminished Jamal Hill's performance in reality and... You know, you said some things that weren't too respectful about him. And I'm not saying he has to be respectful. But you can't act like you are when you clearly aren't. You know what I mean? Be disrespectful against Jamal Hill. Back yourself on that the entire way through. Don't, like, try and wriggle your way out of it and act like you weren't in any way disrespectful and you have no reason to be against me. If I'm disrespectful to Jamal Hill and Jamal Hill calls me out on being disrespectful about Jamal Hill, I'll say, damn right I was. I feel that way. You know what I mean? But Ariel's, he's got, he got caught and he brought up the Dana White slap situation. Just something controversial about Jamal Hill to try and get one over on him at the end of this interview. And it was pathetic. For your opinion on that, all I'm talking about is, because you're is, like, yo, I didn't I did take shots at you. So if the worst thing that you could say on me is, oh, Ariel thinks this guy is, what? You did subliminally take shots at Jamal Hill though. He won the championship belt against Glover, had a better performance than Yuri Prasca, and you spent the show not talking about how great his win was, pretty much. And you were talking about, uh, you know, Yuri's still the best light heavyweight in the world, though. Uh, you know, Bellator could even say they have the best light heavyweight in the world in Nemkov. They could have that angle now. And basically saying that now Jamal Hill's the champion of light heavyweight, that there's, like, no claim. Who knows who's the best light heavyweight in the world? Well, it's Jamal Hill because he dominated Glover Teixeira. And he's the champ of the UFC right now. But what's that? What shots would there have been to take at me? Oh, exactly. You know what I'm saying, hey, yo, it, it got. I mean, it, I was. It was going back and forth, back and forth. It, it, the back and forth on the Twitter was motherfuckers talking shit to me, and most of that was just me addressing shit about the fight and things like that. And I had nothing to do. I wasn't defending nobody. You know what I'm saying? Well, to, for the record, I mean, my feeling is, if you care, like, I agree with no one should touch anyone, but I also agree 
if a woman hits you, you shouldn't hit her back. That's my opinion. So we disagree on that, maybe. When did Jamal Hill disagree on that, dude? This is where it really heats up. This is where I really got heated watching this interview. How fucking dare you put words in his mouth like that, knowing the, the status of the world right now, where if that gets published as Jamal Hill's opinion and you put those words in his mouth and he doesn't address you on it, the trouble he could get into? Sad. Well, to, for the record, I mean, my feeling is if you care, like, I agree with no one should touch anyone, but I also agree if a woman hits you, you shouldn't hit her back. That's my opinion. So we disagree yeah. on that, maybe, right? I didn't. So we disagree on that, maybe. Like, like if Jamal Hill never even mentioned uh, if a woman hits you, you shouldn't hit her back. He never commented on that part of it whatsoever. He just said no one should hit anyone. No one hit anyone at any moment. It's bad. Them two slapping each other was bad. And Ariel Hawani's trying to make it out and seem like, because Jamal Hill didn't specifically say he was against something, that he said he was for slapping a woman back if they slap you first. When he's never said that. I didn't take shots at I you. I didn't criticize you. I didn't take shots at you. I didn't criticize you. There's nothing to criticize. You've made up his stance for something he didn't even mention. I didn't say that. You see, you just assumed that. I never said that. I never said, oh, a man shouldn't a man shouldn't hit i just said nobody should hit anybody why even why even poke the bear right so exactly. here's my thing here's my thing with that i have a daughter right i'm going to my my job for my for as a father is to protect my daughter and give her the best most useful advice possible and i understand not every man is going to be chivalrous like that so my advice to my daughter is to keep your hands to yourself right and that's a more effective way rather than talk a man should never hit you. Of course. Exactly. And Ariel now all of a sudden agrees with this, which was Jamal Hill's take. So what was there for you to criticize about his take? This was Jamal Hill's take. But now Ariel's like, of course. Of course. So you, so, so, so then she thinks, oh, a man should never hit me. And then she ends up hitting a dude and not expect, you know what I'm saying? So that's not, a, that's not, a, that's not effective advice to me. You get what I'm saying? I also believe that if it comes to the point where a woman hits a man, a man shouldn't hit a woman. And Jamal Hill has never disagreed with that. What is this argument stance that you're having? Regardless of no one should hit anyone, obviously everyone, I think, would agree that that would be the best case scenario. The point is... Yeah. Nobody's here, nobody. We should leave it at that. Okay. Man. A lot of people no. had a lot of opinions. I'm just... Yeah. And obviously everyone, I think, would agree that that would be the best case scenario. So if everyone would agree that that would be the best case scenario, that no one should hit anyone, then... You agree with Jamal Hill's statement about the Dana White situation. He really tried to gaslight him here, and it was pathetic from Ariel. The man. point is... Nobody's here, nobody. We should leave it at that. Okay, Dang. a lot of people had a lot of opinions. I'm just saying, you know, I didn't do that. You, you Listen, you can't deny that this created a stir. More comment, bro. Let's talk about something else. I ain't got no more comment on it. I'm not trying That's to get sure. your comment. This is third time. I'm not, but I, I was... I'm not trying to get your comment on it after literally just saying, you've got to admit, this created some kind of stir. Like, he's pressing him on this. I'm not trying to get your comment on the situation about the Dana White slap thing. After the last few minutes of footage I've just shown you, I'm not trying to get your comment on it. Like, he clearly doesn't want to talk about this. It has nothing to do with you diminishing his performance in a title fight. You've chucked it in there to try and get a fucking 10-9 over him because your ego is out of whack right now. And you're hell bent on winning arguments against fighters when that's not your role. Jamal Hill's fan base watched this interview to hear all the cool stories of behind the scenes about his win at UFC 283. You took this interview into your own hands and made it a battle to embarrass Jamal Hill verbally. You lost, and now you're playing pathetic games to try and win it back. You you took you took umbrage with my thoughts on the fighting, and I just wanted you to know that I didn't question you as a, specifically. What's that? I, I, I took umbrage with some shit that pertained to me specifically. Yes, Jamal Hill, man, he's smarter than I thought. He's a smarter guy than I thought because he words things very well, and he had the quick comebacks. He weren't prepared for this, you know. What I mean, I've watched this and I've formulated my argument, and he was on the ball. Quick comebacks that pertained to him specifically. This Dana White slap situation has nothing to do with Ariel Hawani or Jamal Hill against each other in the format of being against each other. Ariel commenting on the fighting of Jamal Hill compared to Yuri Prohaska and Alex Pereira and Nemkov at Bellator absolutely is related to 
a relationship between him and Jamal Hill. Well, and this I'm talking about specifically. Well, this is what I'm talking about specifically. No, no, you aren't. You're bringing up the Dana White slap thing. Well, listen, you talk. You, 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 you are one of the biggest like journalists in this in this lane. You know, and then whenever you jump from steady rather than just like showing showing appreciation and for the uh, things and things like that, you just throw out more questions. I I'm gonna end it there, but that's the point of the whole interview that I wanted to get across, dude. Worm, Ariel is a worm for doing that, man. I hope I summed it up well, and I want to sum it up one more time at the end of this video. He knew there was going to be a confrontation about some of the stuff that he said about Jamal Hill's performance and how he compares to the other light heavyweights in the world. So he knew there was going to be a debate. He lost that argument to Jamal Hill at the start of the interview. And instead of turning that into just talking about the fight itself and what was it like behind the scenes and how do you feel about winning and, and focusing on the achievement of Jamal Hill... When Jamal Hill just brought up like a reference later on about how he was still kind of annoyed about Ariel diminishing him, Ariel just went, oh, well, you didn't see me criticizing when, and he never said this, but it's absolutely what he alluded to, you saying that Dana White was right to slap his wife. That's exactly what he alluded to. Exactly what he alluded to. When in reality, Jamal Hill just said, no one put their hands on anyone. That's a better motto than absolutely blaming Dana White. He doesn't condone what Dana White did, but he also is making sure to double not condone what either of the two did with Dana White or his wife. And Ariel was a snake for bringing that into it and making a large portion of this interview about that and trying to act like Jamal Hill did something he didn't. And even after like four attempts of Jamal Hill saying, why is that even being brought up? Let's move on from this. He kept going on it because he's been, eg his ego's a bit too much with this 10-8 Hawani stuff. And instead of just promoting a fighter and having a good interview for the fans of Jamal Hill to watch, he made it about trying to get one over on Jamal Hill verbally and win an argument against him by chucking in some fucking hellacious shit. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip. I'll see you later. Wormy stuff is all I'm going to say. That's the, that's the act of a worm right there. That was some wormy shit. That's gaslighting at its finest. He needs to swear. He needs to calm himself down. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Toodle Pip. I'll see you later. Goodbye.